I do think that moving forward, we are going to see a lot more surprise Nobel Prize winners in not just physics, but fields like chemistry, 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 chemistry. Well, who could have seen that one coming, am I right? The 2024 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded today as I am filming this, and it was given to three people. The first person that half the award goes to is David Baker, who is a computational biologist and biochemist who has pioneered methods in protein design as well as predicting the three-dimensional structure of these proteins. And the other half of the award is going to be shared jointly by Sir Demis Hassabis, as well as Dr. John Jumper, both of Google DeepMind. Demis is the uh, CEO of Google DeepMind, and they are both uh, computer scientists who specialize in artificial intelligence, and they were awarded for their contributions to DeepMind's AlphaFold program. AlphaFold is a deep learning AI model that can predict protein structures, and its third version was released in 2024, and it can predict the structure of these things known as complexes that are created by proteins uh, with DNA, RNA, ligands, and I believe ions as well. So now, with the physics and the chemistry Nobel Prizes awarded, I think they've both demonstrated the importance of artificial intelligence and more generally computer science in today's uh, day and age, where lots of scientific discoveries require massive amounts of computation, data processing, as well as complex AI models to solve them. Now, unfortunately, in 2013, when I started college, I didn't really want to study computer science because honestly, I was afraid of coding. But nowadays, you don't have to especially with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and yes, artificial intelligence. Speaking of AI, imagine if you could peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT, or even get a grasp on how AlphaFold works its protein folding magic. Well, with Brilliant, you can do just that. Their courses are designed to be uniquely effective using a first principles approach that helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is packed with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method that's proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. I've been using Brilliant myself to brush up on concepts I haven't revisited in a while. For instance, I've been diving back into Einstein's relativity, which has been a fantastic refresher. And let me tell you, their programming courses have been a game changer for me. I've been relearning old material and building better coding fundamentals, all thanks to Brilliant's interactive approach. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do for your personal and professional growth. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit https brilliant.org slash or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Finally, I want to give a huge thank you to Brilliant for being my first sponsor on YouTube. And with that, let's get back to our Nobel discussion. Now that I've had a day to process both the physics as well as the chemistry Nobel prizes, I have some new thoughts on the matter, and I've been looking at a lot of the feedback on social media from professional scientists and just getting the spectrum of opinions. And I think a lot of people are kind of working through the sort of stages of grief right now. And I think I've already reached the acceptance stage because I, I'm i ready to accept now that AI is here to stay. And I think with more reflection over the past day, it only makes sense that these prizes are being awarded to individuals in artificial intelligence. Clearly, AI is having an impact on our society, and it's completely undeniable. And I think also, after seeing Jeff Hinton's interview, post-prize uh, interview, I'm, I'm happy that he got the award and he was given another sort of chance to speak about his concerns about the safety of artificial intelligence and that more should be done in AI alignment and safety, which I totally agree. So um, looking back, even though I'm still a little bit surprised that he won the Nobel Prize in physics, uh, I'm I'm happy for him. And also I'm happy for John Hopfield, who invented the Hopfield uh, networks that are instru- were instrumental in building the, the, the modern day neural net. And I should have mentioned yesterday that Hopfield 
does have a traditional physics background. He has a PhD in both physics, sorry, just PhD in physics and a bachelor's in physics. But he does have a traditional physics background, worked in biophysics, condensed matter, and was even the president of the American Physical Society, which I was a part of when I was an undergrad. So anyways, back to the Nobel Prize and chemistry and AlphaFold. You know, I think that science is going to leverage these tools to make more discoveries. And I think that it's only right that we give computer scientists their due for coming up with these, uh, you know, AI models. I do, I do hope they keep it kind of this format where they have sort of one person who's kind of traditionally seen in the field, like for example, John Hopfield, and in this case for chemistry, David uh, Baker, and then you get some artificial intelligence researchers like Jeffrey Hinton and Demis and John Jumper. So I kind of like what they're doing with this format now that I've seen two of them go through. Though I do kind of have this funny thought, and it's kind of, to use a sports analogy, it's kind of like the LeBron James MVP argument if people are a fan of the National Basketball Association. Because LeBron, much to my chagrin, has been the most dominant basketball player in the NBA for two decades, right? And he easily could have won the Nobel, not the Nobel Prize, sorry. He could have easily won the most valuable player in the NBA um, every year that he played, I'd say between the years of like 20 or 2008 to, I don't know, 2017, something like that. He, he could have easily won the award every year um, in, the, in that span of time, but he didn't, right? He only, he's, he's only won it, I think, four times in his like 20 or so your career. So it's kind of like, do we do that now where we kind of acknowledge that the AI researchers are the ones who are kind of behind the scenes producing all this, you know, all these AI models that are revolutionizing science, but do we, do we just keep giving them the award every year? You know, it's, uh, it's a very interesting question. I mean, I don't know how the the committee is going to move forward with this, but I, I think it's going to be interesting to see the developments and you know, as a scientist, a very young scientist, I should say, I got my PhD last year. I'm all in favor of using new tools to push the boundaries of all these fundamental fields. I mean, physics hasn't had really a fundamental breakthrough in a, in a, in a really long time. And so I think that uh, it, it'd be cool to see how these AI models could possibly augment our abilities to make more fundamental breakthroughs. It's, it's a very interesting time, for sure. And I'm, again, um, mostly in support of it. For me, I hope that other people can get on board because I think, like I said, the the stages of denial um, or what, what's it, the five stages of grief, I think, I think we got to get to the acceptance stage quickly because AI is here to stay and it's not going to go anywhere. And I think that we have to learn how to live with it, how to use it, how to leverage it, and use it to fundamentally push the bounds of our knowledge even further. So congrats to the Nobel laureates in chemistry. That's all I really have to say about today. I'm not a chemist by, by training, so I can't really comment on the, uh, maybe the, the profound impacts this, this has on, on the, on the domain, but you know, understanding protein structure is amazing. And like, I'm really excited to see how AI models could help us out in like drug discovery um, and, and, you know, cures for different medical ailments. So uh, I think that's something that we can uh, feasibly see in the next five to 10 years. And, uh, you know, I think that will be that will be game changing for not just science, but the human race at large. So with that, I think I will conclude the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.